Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Tuesday, April 28th, and it's 7.39. And I just happened to catch out of the corner of my eye over here on this side a video called Trump the Savior. Well, this is Israeli News Live, but it's uh, Steve's wife, Yana, doing an interview with a lady whose name, let's see if it's in the description box, because I didn't catch it. Dr. June Knight. Uh, and there are several links on here that you can go to to check out her more. Well, before I go any further into it, I want to go ahead and share it so y'all can be watching it. Because um, it is 50 some minutes. Now, I will tell you, they had some kind of snafu in their recording here. And where Jana is usually in the little box, and the guest is usually in the big box, the guest is in both boxes, and she's talking normal in the little box. <laughs> and then the big box is like a slow motion, no noise coming out of it, but I don't know. It was some kind of glitch, but so just ignore the big box. <laughs> Pay attention to the little one and just listen. But I want to play a little bit of this because there are still people who believe uh, because of false prophecies that have gone out about President Trump and others. Um, they believe he's like this King Cyrus and he's going to make America great and that he's born again and, and um, what was it somebody put in the comments that in 20, he's going to get reelected in 2020 and in the next four years he's going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. I think that was Kim Clements they said. Well, I had already figured that man was a false prophet the first time I watched him, but I watched him twice to make sure that I was, that what came out of his mouth made me still know in my heart, in my spirit, that he was a false prophet. See, here's the thing about it. You might say, well, no, 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 he said Trump was going to get elected and, and he was right. Well, so that you could get a 50-50 chance. But here's the thing. The, the presidents are pre-selected. Satan already knows because the Illuminati already knows who's going to be the next president because they start grooming these guys uh, when they're teenagers. They don't just let somebody decide to run for president and they pay their million dollars and they get to be on the ballot and hope you vote for them. It, it doesn't work that way. It sounds like it does. You think it does. Uh, but nothing is as it seems. Okay? So just listen to this Dr. June Knight for just... A minute. When he walked out in my heart about this, she, she's, uh, uh, her degree is in mass communications of all forms TV, radio, books, magazines, etc. So she, God told her after he told her, put, put the book writing down, go in your prayer closet for eight weeks, and when she came out, uh, you know, got done with eight weeks of praying and not writing. He told her to go to Washington, D.C. And she was like, what? On $9 and a suitcase? He's always sending her off somewhere with very little money. But somehow she comes up with it and, and he provides. So anyway, that takes great faith. So I believe that you can believe anybody like that. So she's talking about going to Washington and she's out on the lawn and the president is coming out and about to get in a helicopter. And that's where they're at. And she sees him and she yells at him. Okay. 
I was a fool. I was like, no, it's the president. So he walked out, and when he was walking over to his helicopter, uh, we was right past the Rose Garden. I couldn't contain myself. I screamed, and I said, Mr. President, we love you. And he looked at me. He was so shocked because I because I was a White House correspondent going crazy over him. And he looked at me, and he goes, well, he said, hello. And go, but that's how crazy I was over him. That's how much I believed all these prophecies out here. I believed, you know, that he was King Cyrus. And, you know, I was all of in, all of the Trump 2020, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Oh, wow. When I first got there, the Lord revealed to me, uh, I don't mean to get into all that, but the point is, God showed me the perversion that was coming down the body through LGBT. So the Lord made me, when I first got there, to stand in front of the White House with a megaphone in front of 400 people and declare, President Trump, Republicans, if you partner with the LGBT, judgment will come to this nation so fast. We thought we had a reprieve, but if you partner with perversion, God will not partner with you. And that was to the Republicans, too. So, six months later, it starts being exposed. I was in there, and I saw him endorsing the LGBT. And then I was like, what? And so I had a decision to make. Do I tell the bride? Because the Trump supporters out there are die-hard Trump. I mean, you can't tell them nothing. He is King Cyrus, you know, he is the man. So I thought, so if you're one of those, you got to listen up and stop being a die-hard Trump supporter. This man is not who you think. Please continue to listen. Uh, okay, but I thought, no, God does not budge on perversion. He does not. So I told him, I said, your president went on Fox News and endorsed gay marriage. And then everybody's like, okay, you know, so... Okay. She said, I don't care. They didn't care. Hypocrisy. Yeah, so the next month, yeah, it is. So the next month, he endorses LGBT month, the whole month. I expose that, they're like, so what? He's doing it to get the votes. I'm like, okay, he didn't need the LGBT to get in the first time. Why does he need it now? You know what I'm saying? Okay, then uh, the deal was with the embassies. Okay, I was in the State Department and I was in the press room and I was able to ask them a question. So I said, because I had already done some research, so I said, what is the rule on the LGBT flags being flown on the outside of the embassy and the inside? Because they was telling her about Trump is such a good man, he took down those flags off of the outside of the embassies. Look how he's backing up the church. But they didn't tell you they was doing it on the inside all across the country. So I wanted that to get out there to the world, the hypocrisy. And so when I asked that, she quickly, you know, changed subject. But she's like, yes, we are going to allow them to do it on the inside. But, you know, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Let your sin be hidden on the inside. That's just a little a little snippet of what she see this woman got to be a White House correspondent because of her degree in communication and I guess her history of writing and other shows she's been on, interviews and they looked her up, found out she was somebody in communications. So anyway, um, I'm going to listen to the rest of it. I'm going to uh, f close out this video so I can get it up. So if some of y'all want to see this, it is uh, old. It was put up April, not old, but it wasn't like yesterday. It's April 22nd, so it's just a few days old. So anyway, um, I'm going to end it with that and... Uh, I pray that people will wake up and realize, you know, 
He's a politician. He's part of the Illuminati. He's even part of the bloodline. He's a very rich man. And he's just doing what he's told. And the Jesuits in the Vatican run everything. You might as well wake up and realize it. If there were to be an election in 2020 and he makes it, it's only because they planned it and wanted him in there. Okay? That's the way it is. And you need to realize it. But despite whatever their plans are, we know our God is on the throne. And his plans, if that's not his idea of how things are going to go, his plans will rule. Never forget that. Now all the information is coming out about this COVID thing and what a overreaction, you could say, the country took. Now, uh, what is that? Some news network... Uh, where truth is like archaeology, and we're always digging for it. What is the name of that? I'll have to find it. Anyway, I'll uh, put the channel name in that one video. You can watch that and some of her past ones. They've been dumping milk, hundreds, millions of gallons. I mean, a bunch. And slaughtering uh, cattle or cows. Smashing eggs because the people working in those kind of places are standing less than six feet apart is what I figure. I mean, why else would they do that? They had to have a reason. Well, if the I don't know how any governor could say those things were non-essential and how you you can't make them wear they're wearing gloves anyway. Make them wear a mask. Wouldn't you want to wear... You, have you ever smelled a poultry plant? They're enough to make you gag a maggot. Let me tell you something. They're horrible. I used to live near one. And I hated driving by that place. Because they'd put all that scrap into this water thing. It was like a big, huge, round swimming pool. But off the ground kind... But maybe 12 feet or 15 feet high. I don't know. I really couldn't tell from the road. But it was tall. It was full of water. And it would, I guess, break up these little bits and pieces that you don't want in your little package of chicken thighs. You know what I'm saying? And that stuff would rot and stink. You know how a chicken package smells after you take your chicken out and you throw it in the trash and it sits there all night? You wake up and remember, oh my gosh, I forgot to take out the trash last night. It stinks to the high heavens. So we'll multiply that times 100. Well, anyway, those poultry pot processing plants probably have people ha standing pretty close to each other, each doing their part to the chicken and whatever and passing it on. And then next one, the same way with factories that build things. That's why they're all shut down and nobody's making anything. And it's... Anyway, uh, I didn't mean to get off on all that, but that's just some things I've been watching lately. And I hadn't really... I guess I just hadn't really felt like making videos. But these these are things that are going on. And if you didn't know it, you know, I don't, you know, I guess I don't care because I know they're all signs of the oncoming famine. And I know that the Bible says, for just as in the days of Noah, there will be eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage on the day that. Noah, you know, when the flood came and took them all away, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Well, that has to be the first rapture. It has to be. Because we know the second one, when the multitude, too large to number, appear in heaven, they are hungry, they've been thirsty, they've been crying, they've been hot. So I'm thinking they go in the summer. So, 
I mean, figure it out. This stuff is happening. It's coming to pass. And we should be excited about it. Not scared or worried. I hate it for our friends or relatives who aren't ready. But how many of us have tried and tried and tried to send them videos, to tell them in person? They don't want to hear it. They just, you know, think you're judging them and turn away. Don't judge me. You don't know what I feel for the Lord or whatever, you know. Or I just don't want to hear it. I just don't believe in all that. Whatever their excuse is, keep praying for them. Our prayers are being heard. I know they are. And sometimes the Lord says no, but you know what the Word says. It is the Father's will that none should perish. He doesn't want anyone to perish. But they have to accept Jesus as their Savior. You have to be... The Bible says nothing unholy will enter into the kingdom of heaven. So how do you get holy? By repenting of your sins and asking for forgiveness and living right. If you get born again in enough time to read the word and start praying and start praising and worshiping the Lord and, you know, learning about the Lord, then you better do it. There are things people have to do to prove they love Jesus. We can't just say we do. And he knows your heart. You can have a head full of Bible knowledge. But if you never get it into your heart. Where there's a relationship that you form. It means nothing to him. Those are the people who will be told. Depart from me. I never knew you. Because they did the right things. They had a head full of knowledge. But they never got it in their heart. They never had the relationship. They never shed tears when they repented. They never desired closeness. They did the right things. They read their word. They memorized scriptures. They told others about the Lord. They maybe even casted out demons. You see my point. They knew the right things to do. And if you're born again, you do have the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can go and cast a demon out because they don't like to hear the name of Jesus. And if you're pleading the blood of Jesus and you're telling them to get out in Jesus' name, they're going to go. But that does not mean you have an intimate relationship with the Lord. And that's what he wants. Okay, so no matter what you listen to, whether it's politics or whether it's health information, don't let any of it scare you. Just let it inform you. The Illuminati has their plans. They have their plans and they are coming to fruition. COVID-19 was the very first of a number of things that are being planned. To go into action to bring about the completion of the New World Order. Well, they did the COVID-19 live exercise. And we don't know how much further that's going to go. If it will return this fall. If it will mean a vaccination program with the mark of the beast. We don't know. But I think it will. I think it will. And I believe the raptures both will take place before then. I hope so. I know the first one will. Because he's promised the church of Philadelphia to escape the hour of temptation that is to come upon the whole earth. Go by the word of God. When you hear of a prophecy... Is it in the word? Can you find a scripture to back it up? 
Now, if it's a word of knowledge for you as to whether you should sell your house or not, you probably aren't going to find scripture to, to back that up. That's got to be, that's where the personal relationship comes in. And when you know, feel the Lord telling you to go, then you know to go. Okay? He'll open the doors and make it happen. If your house doesn't sell, maybe you heard wrong. See? I, I would always pray something like, if it was that instance, if you want me to go, let this house sell for so much. I have to make X number of dollars. You know how much I owe on it. And we need X number of dollars left over to make the move. So if nobody will pay that much, then it's like, okay, it wasn't meant to be. It was just me thinking it. That's how I live. I try to. And I'm asking him, if you want me to have another puppy, you show me one that's of a reasonable cost for the adoption or to buy one, whatever, make it where I'm, I don't want to be searching online all day, every day, and hunting and hunting. I, I feel like I have been doing some of that. And I just haven't. <clears throat> Maybe after everything opens back up, it, it'll happen. But right now, everything's shut down. You can't even get a person on the phone at the Humane Society. And anyway, so what I'm just saying all that is to say I'm just leaving it in God's hands that he'll make it happen. Like when I finally found that ad with Buddy. I, I even got a transportation agency to take me to get him miles away because I said, uh, will they pay, will they cover a ride to go pick up a companion animal? And that particular transportation agency did. So, looky there. See, it was all... All the provision was made. And it wasn't a big deal. Like a big hassle for me. And I feel like it's going to be have to be that way again. Okay. I'm ending this year. I'm pleading the blood of Jesus over it. Over myself. Over my computer. Over each and every one of you. Your devices. And over your internet connections as well. And with that I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.